Congratulations, you guys, on Central Park. Um, as, a, as somebody who loves Central Park, and every time I go to New York, I have to go there at least once to wander through and see the fountain, Bethesda, and all that. Will we learn things about the park in the course of the show? We love um, sort of showcasing the the real park and putting our own twist on it. It's this, it's this lightly fabulized version of the real park. So, And also, by the way, doing animation in the age of Google Earth is mm. great. It is like you can drop a little guy in the middle of the park and draw the right, the correct background and turn around and see what's, you know, what the other angle looks like. Um, so we have a, um, a, a loving uh, representation of the park and we, it's fun to bring it forward and, and we hope to just keep going. I, we went on a trip just to shoot like pictures of gum on the sidewalk and cracks in the pavement and you know we want to get all that into. Kristen, talk about your character a little bit um, and who she is in the show and her journey that we see. I play a 13 year old named Molly. Um, who is uh, the daughter in this family who is sort of the, the father is the caregiver of the park. They live in uh, in the center of the park. And she is your typical 13-year-old. She's relentlessly creative, and she is sort of trying to find her way in the world. She um, easily embarrasses herself. She kind of vomits out her words. But she's not... Um, rebellious or anything. She doesn't dislike her family, but she um, has a lot of feelings. She's trying to figure out who she is, and she um, draws. She sort of draws like comic strips, and in those comic strips, she is a superhero. So she feels weird in real life, but on the page, she's able to draw herself with uh, strength. And David, um, you're playing a woman in this. I am. Any different approach for that, or did you do anything different with your voice, or how did you? How did you? Do I, I feel like every time I try to do something different with my voice, they're like, "Just say, it. just." Say it. Uh, Sorry about that. No, it's great. <laughs> um, it, no, I mean, the great thing about Helen is she's just like so. She's so put upon. I mean, she's working for a horrible, horrible person, and. Uh, and is just is asked to do the most ridiculous things, and um, you know there's so much just like give me strength just to get through. She's a really sort of really fun character to play, and the moments where she gets to like let loose in in songs, where we get to really like sort of dive into the things she isn't imagining, and she's also like a fabulous weirdo, you know, like she's <laughs> just like um, so. There's there's a lot. There, there's a there's a lot there to play with her. Lauren, what 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 are some of the other stories we'll see in the first season? Anyway, I know there is a threat of somebody wanting to buy the park, but I'm guessing there's other things going on as well. That's right. We wanted to have a, a this overarching threat that's the that's going to sustain the series. Um, that's just this existential threat. Is the park uh, quite as uh, strong as you thought, or is it actually a little bit fragile? And what does that mean to the family? But then within that, have um, room to tell stories. Obviously, there's a million of them. When you just dig a little bit, you can find something as simple as, you know, the, somebody released uh, this snakehead fish into the Harlem Mirror, and it's, like, could potentially eat every living thing in the pond. And so the, the park, in real life, the park personnel had to go see if that was true. They go muck around in the mud and see if they can find this monster fish. So those kinds of stories, the writers are, you know, frantically just printing out, you know, these uh, articles and we just, it's a, it's a, a kid in a candy shop. Who is this show for? Like, would you watch this with your kids or is it more adult or is it everybody can watch and get different things out of it? It's definitely co-viewing. For sure, because I have watched with my kids, and I was I didn't know because you know when I'm recording, I'm only doing my parts. I'm reading the rest of the script, but I don't know where they're going to go or how they're going to amend it. And I was like, "Will this be more adult?" And it made me laugh out loud, and my kids loved it. That's great. Yeah. Same. I I Very test I test everything uh, by my kids. So every time we get a rough cut, I show it to them, and it is one of those remarkable things. And I think it's a gift of Mr. Bouchard mm -hmm. back here. Uh, with Bob's Burgers as well, that it he really creates these shows that do feel like an opportunity for the whole family to sit down on the couch and get lost. Uh, the component, that extra added component of the musical nature of the show, mm -hmm. and the show really being a love letter to musicals. Not a show with music, but a show that fundamentally these characters need to break out into song in order to touch base with their emotions and with the progression of the storyline. That to me makes it so special because everybody, whether you're two or whether you're 92, 
is going to be able to enjoy a story told in such a unique fashion. Thank you.